So this evening we are interested in talking about something called projectile motion. The reason why we are interested in projectile motion is also is because projectile motion has some bits of what we are interested in which is uniform accelerated motion. Now, by definition, a projectile is a body okay, that moves in two different directions under its own force, under the influence of gravity. Okay? So the projectile moves in two different directions such that it moves along the horizontal direction and it also moves vertically. This horizontal motion of the projectile and the vertical motion of the projectile happens at the same time. Examples of things which move in two different directions at the same time, which qualify as projectiles, are stones, when you're throwing stones at the police, and the police are firing back tear gas at you. Those are examples of projectiles. The stone you're going to throw is going to cover some distance, and also it's going to rise up high to maximum height. When it reaches maximum height, it will start coming down, while at the same time moving horizontally. So that is an example of a projectile. The same happens when the tear gas canister is fired where, at where you are. So the tear gas canister is going to gather some height, reach some maximum height while moving horizontally at the same time. At maximum height, the tear gas canister will stop gaining height. It will start coming down while continuing until it lands wherever you are. After that, the, can the gas in the canister will come out, then you get choked. So, what qualifies as a projectile is basically an object which moves in two different directions at the same time, which are at 90 degrees to each other. The vertical direction, which is the vertical direction, which is the x x direct uh, the y direction, and the horizontal direction, which is the x direction. These directions are at 90 degrees to each other. When it comes to projectiles. We have a couple of things we are interested in, okay? And you should be able to describe how a projectile really moves. We have said it moves in two different directions. One along the x-axis, which is the horizontal direction, and another along the y-axis, which is the vertical direction. These two motions happen at the same time. Okay. Now, when it comes to the motion along the x-axis, the horizontal motion, the horizontal motion is basically constant velocity motion. There is no acceleration along the x-axis. Along the x-axis, in the horizontal direction, your projectile does not have or does not undergo any acceleration. What that means is that the velocity of the projectile along the x direction stays the same. It does not change. The only change happens in the vertical direction. In the vertical direction, the projectile will start to go up. As it goes up, the projectile will not go on forever, otherwise you would not throw stones or the police would not fire tear gas if the tear gas went high and high and high up forever. It would be a useless exercise. But you know that as you are throwing these things up or the police are firing the tear gas up, it will reach some particular height. Then after reaching some particular height, the tear gas or your stone you have thrown will start to come down. Hopefully think you think it will land where you want it to land i don't know where it's going to land okay so what i'm trying to say is that as your whatever it is your throne goes up it needs to reach maximum height the only way it reaches maximum height from our discussions what we have learned is that at maximum height 
the velocity of the object at maximum height along the y direction has to be equal to 0 meters per second. So, as it's going towards maximum height, it starts off with a certain velocity along the y direction. Eventually, that velocity becomes zero. It becomes zero because the velocity reduces. So if the velocity changes from whatever it was when this thing was going up, then at maximum height, it becomes zero. It means that there has been a change in the velocity of the object. So there is acceleration in the y direction. At maximum height in the y direction, we know that the velocity at maximum height is equal to zero. This thing is not going to stay at maximum height forever because the earth is always pulling on things. So shortly after being at maximum height, your stone or the canister is going to start coming down towards the earth. The velocity of the canister will increase. So again, there is acceleration as the canister falls from maximum height in the sense that the velocity of the canister or the stone begins to increase as it falls from maximum height. So, as your projectile goes towards maximum height, its velocity reduces to zero. Then when it reaches maximum height, its velocity starts to increase from zero to whatever it is we're going to see, and that's why we are interested in these things. So, for a projectile, along the x-axis, along the horizontal direction, there is no acceleration. The acceleration is only present in the y direction. As the projector goes away from the surface of the Earth, the acceleration, which is due to the gravity on Earth, is minus 9.8 meters per second. After reaching maximum height, as the projector comes back from the maximum height, approaching the surface of the Earth, the acceleration is plus 9.8 meters per second. So that bit you have to be aware of. Along the y direction, there's acceleration of plus 9.8 meters per second. The acceleration is negative. If you're going away from the surface of the Earth, it's positive if you're coming towards the surface of the Earth. The other thing we are interested in when it comes to projectiles is how much time it takes for the projectile to reach maximum height. That is what we call the rise time. How much time does it take to reach some height? Apart from the rise time, we are also interested in the maximum height reached by the projector. So we're interested in how much time it takes the projector to reach maximum height. We are also interested in the maximum height reached. Then apart from that, we are also interested in how much time it takes the projector to fall from maximum height to the ground. So you need to be able to work out the rise time of a projectile. You need to be able to work out the maximum height reached by a projectile. You need to be able to work out the fall time of a projectile. Then the other thing, which is just the sum of the rise time and the fall time, is something which we call the flight time. The flight time is the amount of time the projectile is in the air. So this flight time is the sum of the rise time and the fall time. So you just add the rise time and the fall time, then that, then that is going to give you the flight time. With this flight time, flight time will make it possible for you to work out the range, which is the horizontal distance which a projectile travels. Remember? In the horizontal direction, your projectile has no acceleration. So it does not undergo any acceleration. So it moves with a constant velocity along the horizontal direction. The velocity with which it moves along the horizontal direction multiplied by the time the projectile is in the air, that is going to give you how far this thing is going to move, the range. So we only concern ourselves with the range after we have found out what the flight time is. Because how far a projectile moves depends on how long it is in the air. Last but not least, we are also interested 
in finding out with what velocity the projectile strikes the ground. So these are the things which you should be able to work out and find in order to describe the motion of a projector. You need to find out what the rise time is, how much time did it take to reach maximum height. Uh, you need to find out what the maximum height was, what maximum height was reached. So I don't know if it's my connection or is your connection or is it? Sam here, we can't get you, sir. You can't get me? Yeah. Hello, sir. You can't get me. Oh. You can't. Oh. Yeah, I'm in a lab with internet, so I don't really know exactly what's. Sam here. What's happening? So, for how long have you not been getting me? Okay, I'll stop a bit. I'll try to do the presentation yeah, again. Cutting, Sorry? I just cut it a bit. I just cut it a bit. Your mic is showing that it's, it's off. We end the same bracket, then. Mm, we have no one to take more here. Just wait. At the name. Can you see? And can you That's hear me? Yes, hmm? Just a minute. Give it a minute. Can you see our presentation? Yes, sir. Okay. So, to study this projectile business, we're going to use an example. Your mic is off, sir. We're just one of these. My microphone is not off. My microphone is on. Yes, my microphone is on, not off. So I don't know which bits you're seeing. But I can assure you my microphone is on. Okay. So, we are going to consider a case of an anti-aircraft gun which is fired. Okay. When this anti-aircraft gun is fired, the shell which is fired from the gun leaves the gun with a velocity of 550 meters per second and this gun is fired at an angle of 45 degrees to the ground so anti-aircraft guns are these big guns which you use to shoot down planes okay. so and the, what we describe as a shell is actually a very big bullet which is put in these guns so that shell leaves the gun with the muzzle velocity of 550 liters per second at an angle of 45 degrees this is the information which you're most likely to be provided with when it comes to projectiles we are going to provide you with the velocity with which the projectile leaves the gun or the hand or whatever it is and the angle at which it is fired with this information you need to do something with it the first thing you need to do is you need to ask yourself this velocity with which the gun the shell has been fired from the gun how much is this velocity along the x-axis and how much is this velocity along the y-axis okay because along the x-axis there is a different type of motion happening along the x-axis there is no acceleration However, along the y-axis, in the vertical direction, there is acceleration. As the shell moves away from the surface of the earth, along the y-axis, its velocity is going to reduce. You have a question? Yes, go ahead. Yes, sir. What's the question? Sir, the, the fact that there is no acceleration in the Now, is it an 
assumption or that is how it no, there is no acceleration in the x in the x direction. There is no acceleration in the x direction. That's why we use guns to fight. The reason why we use guns to fight is because we know that when the bullet comes out from the gun, that's why the police shoot guns. When the bullet comes out from the gun, the speed of the bullet will not reduce horizontally. That's why people are able to fight with guns. So there is no acceleration. When you fire a gun, the acceleration along the horizontal direction is not there. The only kind of acceleration which happens is in the vertical direction. When the bullet falls to the ground, it's because it is losing height. That is in the vertical direction. Okay. So... The reason why we want to find out how much is now, the... now sir. Yes. Since there's no acceleration in the Hello? Okay, I've lost him. So I'll continue. So along the X direction, the Projectile does not experience any acceleration. Sir, my name is cutting. You are not able to get your leg. Yes. Sir. I can't hear what people are saying. What are you saying? Can you explain uh, again? Can you explain again the thing acceleration in the horizontal? I've just said there is no acceleration. Direction, because your network is still cutting. There is no acceleration along the x direction, meaning that the velocity along the x direction stays the same if there is no acceleration for a projectile. Okay, the acceleration only happens in the y direction. So, in the case where our projectile left the gun, left uh, our shell left the gun with a speed of 550 meters per second. Sorry? So in the case where our projectile leaves the gun at a speed of 500 meters per second, at an angle of 45 degrees, we can find out how much the initial velocity of this thing is in the x direction. And that's where components come in. How much the velocity how much the mass of velocity of the shell is along the x direction we find it as a component of the mass of velocity ux ux is going to be equal to 550 meters per second multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the direction in which the shell was fired and the angle between this direction and the x-axis which is 45 degrees so we end up with 550 meters per second multiplied by the cosine of 45. So we end up with a horizontal direct a horizontal velocity of 386 meters per second. In the y direction, we are also interested in how much this 550 meters per second is along the y direction because this shell has to go up. So we want to find out how much the velocity is with which this shell is going to rise up. So for us to do that, we're basically trying to find what is the y component of this mass of velocity. So in this case, the mass of velocity in the y direction, initial velocity is going to be 550 meters per second multiplied by sine 45, and that's going to be another 386, 89 meters per second. As we have said, Along the x direction, the velocity will always remain the same. So it's going to be 389 meters per second. But the same cannot be said about the velocity in the y direction because this shell has to rise to maximum height. When the shell rises to maximum height, and when it reaches maximum height, along the y direction, the velocity is going to be 0 meters per second at maximum height. So the velocity would have reduced from 389 
meters per second to zero meters per second. Since the shell is moving away from the surface of the earth, heading towards maximum height, we know that the acceleration in that case is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second. So with this information, we know how much the initial velocity is along the y direction. The initial velocity is 389 meters per second. When the shell reaches maximum height, the final velocity along the y direction is going to be zero meters per second. And next, we know that the shell is moving away from the surface of the earth. So the acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second. We can use this information to find out how much time it takes our shell to reach maximum height. And the equation we use is going to be this one. V is equal to U plus GT. In this case, we are interested in what's happening in the Y direction. So it's going to be VY minus U uh, equals to UY plus GT. This VY is the final velocity at maximum height. Then this UY is the initial velocity of this projectile in the y direction as it starts going up. Then the g is the acceleration due to gravity because this shell is going towards maximum height, then our g is going to be negative. Then the t, that's what you're calling t rise, that is how much time it's going to take this thing to reach maximum height. So when we make the substitutions for vy, which is equal to at the velocity at maximum height, which is zero meters per second, then u y which is uh, 389 meters per second then g which is minus 9.8 meters per second when we substitute we have zero meters per second uh, 389 meters per second uh, meters per second plus minus 9.8 meters per second multiplied by t rise like that then when we drop off the units we end up with zero equals to 389 plus nine minus 9.8 multiplied by t the plus and the minus when you multiply them we end up with this side 0 equals to 389 minus 9.8 t rise. So then you get this minus 9.8 t rise on the other side, you have 9.8 t rise equals to 389. You divide both sides by 9.8, you end up with t rise equals to 389 divided by 9.8. You carry out this division, you end up with a t rise which is equals to 39.7 seconds. So in this case, it takes our shell. 39.7 seconds, which is roughly 40 seconds to reach maximum height. Are we clear on how we find the rise time? We use the fact that no. we know. Someone said no. Where are you not clear? Yeah, because you need to consider. Yeah. On the T-Rise, you can just go to. Which part when on the T-Rise? When you started solving, so it was not clear. Which part? Yeah. Which part of T-Rise? T-Rise is the time it takes our projector to reach maximum height. So we know that at maximum height, the velocity is zero meters per second. Then this is in the y direction. If you're talking about maximum height, then you have to move in the y direction. So when we start off working with the problem, we're only interested in what's happening in the y direction. So at maximum height, the velocity is zero meters per second. Then the initial velocity in the y direction is what we have here. The initial velocity in the y direction, ui is 389 meters per second. So with that information, we substitute it in this equation. V is equal to U plus GT. So for VY, that is going to be at the velocity, the final velocity at maximum height, that would be zero meters per second, plus the initial velocity along the Y axis, that's going to be 389 meters per second. This UY is the Y component of the muzzle velocity then since we are moving away from the surface of the earth then g is minus 9.8 then multiplied by t rise t rise is the time to maximum height that's what we are looking for we do not know it yet but we are looking for it so when you make our substitutions 
for the final velocity in the y direction at maximum height that's going to be zero meters per second then the initial velocity in the y direction is going to be 389 meters per second plus our acceleration we are moving away from the surface of the earth as we go towards maximum height so it's going to be minus 9.8 meters per second so our object is going to slow down we multiply it by t rise we multiply that by t rise when we drop off the units end up with zero on this side as our final velocity at maximum height equals to 389 our initial velocity in the y direction plus minus 9.8 t rise so this plus and that minus multiply them we get a minus and we end up with zero equals to 389 minus 9.8 t rise and next we get this minus 9.8 t rise take it to the other side you have 9.8 t rise equals to 389 then we divide on both sides by 9.8 so we get t rise equals to 389 divided by 9.8 389 divided by 9.8 gives us a t rise of 39.7 seconds which is roughly 40 seconds as the time it takes our projectile or our shell to reach maximum heights is this clear yeah so sir can we use the, the, the other formula u initial size delta gravitation sorry uh can we also uh use this uh the other was there was a formula which is uh initial initial sign theta over gravitation that's the topic that's the next topic because there are formulas to how you can find these things that's the next topic after this one yes you can do that okay. yes next with this rise time now that you know how much time it takes your projectile to get to maximum height you can try to find out what the maximum height is by using this formula s is equal to ut plus half gt squared you're looking for the maximum height reached you know what the initial velocity in the y direction is then you know the t the rise time then plus half then the g we are moving away from the surface of the earth so your g is minus 9.8 meters per second squared multiplied by rise time squared so in that case we end up with this s max that's what we're looking for the maximum height is equals to ui the initial velocity in the y direction multiplied by the rise time plus half g rise time squared so in our case the ui from our table of components the initial velocity of the projectile in the y direction is 389 meters per second then the rise time we have found to be 39.7 seconds and the acceleration due to gravity because our shell is moving towards maximum height is minus 9.8 so we substitute these values here so we end up with s max is equals to ui which is 389 meters per second multiplied by rise time which is 39.7 seconds plus half times the acceleration due to gravity you're moving away from the surface of the earth which is minus 9.8 meters per second times t rise which is 39.7 squ seconds squared that when you drop your units you have 389 times 39.7 minus 0 0.5 times 9.8 times 39.7 squared and when you carry out this calculation you end up with a maximum height s max of 7220 meters so along the y direction our projectile rises to a maximum height of 7720 meters is this clear the whole thing of going up and down is being treated like motion in a straight line because that's exactly what it is if your projector was not moving along the horizontal direction then it would just be moving in a straight line like the example we looked at last week okay now that we know how much the maximum height is we can use this maximum height to find out how how much time 
it takes our projectile to fall. When our projectile is at maximum height of 7,720 meters and it falls from there to hit the ground, it's going to fall through a height of 7,720 7, meters. As it is falling from maximum height, when it's at maximum height, its initial velocity is 0 meters per second. At maximum height, in the y direction, its initial velocity is 0 meters per second. As it begins to fall from maximum height, it's, this velocity will not stay the same. It will increase. So as it falls towards the surface of the Earth, the velocity will increase because the Earth is pulling on this particular object. That's why things fall. Because the Earth is pulling on them always. And the acceleration in that case, as you fall towards the surface of the Earth, is 9.8 meters per second. So we know the distance through which this projectile is going to fall from maximum height to the ground, that distance is the same as the distance through which it rose, which is 7,720. We know that starting from maximum height, coming to the ground, the initial velocity in the y direction at maximum height is zero. Okay? Because the projectile is coming towards the surface of the earth, it is going to increase in speed or velocity. So it has got an acceleration of minus nine of 9.8 meters per second so what we are looking for is how much time it's going to take to fall so we use this formula s is equal to ut plus half gt squared so in our case the distance we are looking at is the maximum height because our projectile is falling from maximum height then we look at the initial velocity of the projectile at maximum height at maximum height, the initial velocity is 0 meters per second. That's why it's called maximum height, because the velocity is 0. Then we multiply by the time it's going to take to fall. Then plus half, the acceleration due to gravity, since it's going to be from maximum height, is going to fall towards the surface of the Earth. So the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second, multiplied by uh, the time of fall squared. So when we substitute, we have a value of maximum height, that is uh, 7,720 meters. Then we put it here, uh, sorry, we put it this side. Then the initial velocity at maximum height, which is zero meters per second. Then the four time, that's what you're looking for. Then plus half G, the G is 9.8 meters per second. So you end up with this. 7,720 meters equals to the initial velocity at maximum height, which is 0 meters per second, times the 4 time, then plus half, the acceleration due to gravity. So as you are coming towards the surface of the Earth, the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second, times again the 4 times squared. When you drop the units, you end up with 7,720 equals to 0 times T4, then plus half, 9.8 times T4 squared. So this gives you 7,720 equals to 0, plus this half times 9.8, that's going to be 4.9 t squared. So we have 0 plus 4.9 t squared, that's just going to give you 7,720 equals to 4.9 t squared. You get the 4.9 t squared to the other side, you have 4.9 t squared, uh, t squared, uh, 4.9 uh, t4 squared equals to 7,720. You divide both sides by 4.9, you end up with T4 squared is equals to 7,720 divided by 4.9. That's going to give you 1,575.5. 1,775.5. You take the square root on both sides, you end up with T4 equals to the square root of 1,575.5. And this gives you a four time of 39.7 seconds. Now, if you look at this four time of 39.7 seconds, this four time is exactly the same as the rise time which is 39.7 seconds the reason why this is the case is because the height to which our projectile rises which the maximum height to which our projectile rose to which was 7720 is the same as the height through which our projectile falls from maximum height. So if 
the, the height to which a projector rises to and the height through which a projector falls is the same. Then the, 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 the rise time and the fall time are going to be the same. Remember that the acceleration in this case has got the same signs. The only difference is the sign in the acceleration. When you're going away from the surface of the Earth, the acceleration is minus 9.8. That causes a reduction in speed. When you are coming towards the surface of the Earth, the acceleration is plus 9.8. So if the distance is the same, the distance going up is the same as the distance coming down, then that simply means that the time to go up and the time to come down must be the same because the size of the acceleration is the same. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So we come up with a very important conclusion here. When you throw a stone up, the time it takes your stone to go up and the time it takes your stone to come down, if they throwing the stone on a level ground, that should be the same. Okay. The next thing, now that we know how much time our projectile is going to go up, the rise time, and how much time it takes our projectile to come down, the fall time, now that we know these two values, we can work out how much time our projectile will be in the air, which is what is called known as the flight time. So the flight time is just the sum of the rise time and the sum of the fall time. You add the time it takes your projectile to go to maximum height, then you add the time it takes your projectile to fall from maximum height. The sum of these two quantities is what you call the flight time. The total time your projectile is in the air. So in our case, our rise time is 39.7 seconds and our fall time is 39.7 seconds. So in that case, we end up having a flight time TF, which is equal to 79.4 seconds. And right now, I would want to take your attention back a bit to this graph. This graph, which we have up here, one of the first graphs. So here, so you can see from here up to our maximum, which is somewhere there. And that is your rise time. That is approximately 40 seconds. Then from that 40 seconds, you come down, that is also approximately 79 point something, which is close to 80 seconds. Then you can look at the maximum height, which was reached. Clearly it's more than 7,000. So in our case, we worked out an exact value of 7,720 meters. So this, this flight path, what how much height again is the time this shows you exactly what happened so your projector went up as it was going up it was also moving along the horizontal direction like this okay so it goes it experiences an acceleration as it's going up its velocity reduces just a minute Okay, so that's the maximum height. Uh, to reach maximum height, it takes about 40 seconds. Then to fall from maximum height, it takes about another 40 seconds. Okay, so we now have the flight time. So with this flight time, next task is now to work out what is the horizontal distance which the projectile moved, which is the range. Uh, Okay, before we do that, we could also, where are we? Okay, that, that, okay. The next question before we work out the range is you could also want to find out when the projectile along the y direction, when it comes from 
comes back from maximum height, with what velocity does it strike the ground? Okay, so when the projectile comes back from maximum, from maximum height, hits the ground along the y direction, with what velocity does it strike the ground? So we, there are a couple of things we know as the projectile is coming back from maximum height. We know that at maximum height, the initial velocity at maximum height is equals to zero meters per second in the y direction. So the initial velocity is zero meters per second, which is this one here. We know that as it is coming towards the ground, the velocity is going to increase. So the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second. At the same time, we also know how much time it's going to take to fall from maximum height, which is 39.7 seconds. So with this information, we can use this equation V is equal to U plus GT to find out what will be the velocity of the projectile as it hits the ground in the y direction. So in that case, since we are focused in the y direction, so we're going to have Vy, the final velocity with which it's going to hit the ground in the y direction, is going to be the initial velocity, is going to be equal to the initial velocity of the projectile at maximum height plus the acceleration due to gravity, G. So in this case, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 because we're moving towards the surface of the Earth and the four time here. We make the substitutions, we are going to end up with Vy is equal to the initial velocity at maximum height, which is zero meters per second, plus the acceleration due to gravity, g, which is 9.8 meters per second, times the flight time, which is 36, uh, sorry, 39.7 seconds. When we drop the units, we end up with Vy is equal to zero plus 9.8 times 39.7. When you multiply these things, you end up with a Vy, which is equal to 389 meters per second. This Vy is the velocity with which your projectile in the y direction, which went up with an initial velocity Uy of 389 meters per second. Here we're being told that this thing, when it comes back, it went up, covered this distance of 7,720 7, meters, comes down, traveled another distance of 7,720 uh, meters. It is going to strike the ground in the y direction with a velocity of 389 meters per second. So what you see is that apart from the rise time, T rise, being equal to the four time, it also happens that the initial velocity with which the projectile went up in the air with, in the y direction, is also equal to the final velocity with which the projectile strikes the ground in the y direction. And that is equal to 389 meters per second. This does not mean that in the y direction, the velocity did not change. It changes because as you move from the ground going to maximum height, at some point, at maximum height, your velocity is zero. So for you to reach zero, you have to reduce from 389 meters per second, then you reduce itself to zero. Then at maximum height, where the velocity is zero, when it comes back from maximum height, the velocity has to increase again. It has to increase until it becomes 389 meters per second when it strikes the ground. So there are two parameters to take note of here. When the height to maximum, when the, when the distance to maximum height is the same as the distance to fall from maximum height, the first conclusion you make is that the rise time, which is the time it takes a projectile to reach maximum height, and the time it takes a projectile to fall from maximum height are going to be the same. The other conclusion you make, <coughs> excuse me, is that along the y direction, the initial velocity of the projector with which it goes up and the final velocity in the y direction with which it hits the ground are going to be the same. So that's what we have there. The other thing we are interested in, now that we know the flight time, which is about 79.4 meters per second, and we know the range, the, 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 the velocity of the projectile along the x-axis. 
there is no acceleration along the x-axis it is always 389 meters per second so for all these 90 for, for all these 80 seconds 79.4 seconds when the projector was flying along the x-axis the velocity was always 389 meters per second so when we multiply this velocity along the x-axis times the flight time which is 389 meters per second times the flight time you get yourself the range which is how far this projectile traveled along the x-axis you can clearly see from here that this ux does not change okay so what affects the range is basically how far something was flying in the air the time the length of time your projectile is in the air has got a huge impact on how far your projectile is going to go horizontally okay so in this case our range is going to be 30,886.6 meters and that's approximately 30,009 kilometers that's our range are we clear yes sir okay the other thing you have to remember is we have said along the x-axis there is no acceleration if along the x-axis there is no acceleration it means that the initial velocity along the x-axis ux is equal to the final velocity along the x-axis which is vx and that is going to be 389 meters per second we have also just found out here that if the height through which the projectile goes and falls is the same then along the y axis the initial velocity ui is going to be equal to the final velocity vy which is going to be equal to 389 meters per second by using this final velocity vy and this final velocity vx which is both values are 389 meters per second we can find out the velocity with which the projectile strikes the ground so the final velocity along the x-axis vx is 389 meters per second the final velocity along the y-axis vy is 389 meters per second these are components okay we can work out what the final velocity is with which it's going to strike the ground so this projectile for it to strike the, when it strikes the ground the velocity is going to be equals to the square root of the x component vx squared plus vy squared vx squared is 389 meters per second squared so 389 per, per second the square that plus another 389 per second you square that and you end up with the final velocity v which is equals to 550 meters per second so this shows you that what actually happens is that when you throw or when something is fired excuse me So here we see that the velocity with which our projectile strikes the ground is the same as the velocity with which it left the yeah with which it left the gun it is the same reason why when you throw a stone when you throw a stone with a very high speed from your hand when your stone leaves your hand with a very high speed, you do not expect that stone to hit the person it's hitting at a reduced speed. It won't happen as long as the height is the same. Okay. Are we clear? Yes. Any questions?
Okay, if you've got no questions, question, yes. No question. There's a question, I think. And on the form, yes, on the formulas we were using G, does it mean that it is uh, due to gravity? Uh, is projectile motion a result of gravity? The Y part of the projectile motion is a result of gravity, yes. Along the X axis, there's no, along the horizontal direction, there's no gravity affecting anything. But the gravity only happens, gravity only takes care of things when you're moving away from the surface of the earth or when you are moving towards the surface of the earth. That's when gravity comes in. Yes. So one part, the Y direction, motion in the Y direction, which is responsible for how we get maximum height. That is because of gravity, yes. The one in the horizontal direction, there is no gravity affecting it. When something falls, when something is falling it to the ground, it is because the earth is pulling it. The earth is a very big magnet. It pulls all of us to the ground. Okay, unless there are any other questions, we're going to stop here. So tomorrow we're going to look at how to come up. There are other ways of, there are other ways of working out these things. So tomorrow we're going to look at how to come up with the equations which we can use to calculate the flight time, to calculate the maximum height, to calculate uh, the rise time, uh, fall time, the range, and also the... Strike velocity. Any other questions? Okay, so if there are no other questions, we end here. The recorded video is going to be posted. Yes. Uh, the time uh, is the same as uh, the total time taken. The what? The flight time. Flight time, yes, is the same as the total time it takes your thing to go up to maximum height and come back. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I will stop sharing. Then the, I'll post the recording.